My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 11,200 kilometres so far and I've got 5,400 left to go. So far on the mission, I've survived alone in the desert, a robbery at gunpoint, near death in the jungle, a brutal crash, horror infested waters, malnutrition, sickness and injuries and raised £132,000 for charity. In this episode, we turn to the black market for fuel, start a £1,000 fire, this boy sells us the deadliest snake in Africa and I eat it for breakfast. Look at you making the bed. You're a bit of a domestic god, really, aren't you? See, Stan's got his sarcasm levels turned up to 10 today, then. I'm not being sarcastic. No. Man's putting lids away. You're a changed man. All right, I'll lay off. Who do you think is the most irritating member of Project Africa? You. Yeah. Jared can get irritating as well. <laughs> Who do you think is the most annoying unintentionally? I think it might be you. Oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Gus, what was that guy saying about the drone? There was like some government intelligence service active with the fuel crisis. Things are a bit crazy in town. This morning there was a shout of tankers driving through town. At the same time there was a drone flying around, apparently. So what was that? I don't know. I don't know. No, so pro probably there's some intelligence yeah. service and, and not me. We definitely won't cut to the drone footage. What drone footage? Oh, no drone footage, because there is no. No. With Stan's annoying levels reaching a critical status, I was keen to get moving ASAP. You calling me out for being late? Right. Oi, oi, oi. I slipped through the chaos of the city, past the mile long queues for petrol, and out into the countryside leaving Gus to scour the town for black market fuel. While my body was still in pieces, I had to begrudgingly accept 50k as the new normal until I returned to rip the tarmac to shreds once more. We haven't really spoken that much about the fuel crisis. So I basically, there was a noise. Guinea's got no petrol. It's very hard to locate, which is bad for the economy. Stops people working, stops people doing business. The biggest cause was a huge explosion at one of the main oil centres. I can't remember how many people died, I think 26 or something. 240 people injured roughly. So the petrol. The petrol how many people do you reckon when that queue got shot? A couple yeah. hundred at least? Yeah. It's quite hard to honestly comprehend how problematic that would be for locals. You're almost looking at a nationwide economic standstill, which ultimately results in people dying. And also that's then led to increased protests, mm -hmm. which it's just sustained Guinea's response where they definitely didn't cut out social media. From the surface, like, I think it's uh, shameful for the government to censor internet use on, on social apps and like stop people getting news. I think it's pretty outrageous. It really is. To kill a snake. <laughs> <laughs> C'est bon, manger? Wow. What have you just done, bro? Buying a snake. Hold on. Hey. <laughs> That's just got to see. <laughs> there were like 10,000, so I gave them 10,000, and I also pulled 20,000 out of my hand. And said, I see him run off. <laughs> I love it. They get a quid each, then. That's fucking. They're buzzing off that. We got snake for dinner. Right, the eye. <laughs> Bit of discipline never hit, did it, Gus? Doesn't. Good job. <laughs> oh, he's got a hard stare. <laughs> <laughs> Having quite literally bagged the snake for dinner, I bounced back onto the road for the second stretch. But as we were getting closer to the border, the roads were getting worse and worse, which coupled with the mountains made movement slow and rhythm impossible. Nelly wasn't loving it either. Oh, fuck. 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 
<laughs> okay. It's fine. The left side of the van jumped up. Feel that. I mean, it boosted me out of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> That guy's my boss. This might have been a mistake. That didn't sound good, did it? You know who we're talking about removing those bits off the van? Just thought I'd speed up the process. <laughs> We'll fix it now before worse and good season arrives. I actually, not many people know this, but I worked for three years. <laughs> <laughs> As a stagehand, right? So I'm really good at fixing things. Um, I'm worried about the door shutting. Hmm. That's actually unrelated. Genuine. Fine. Oh, wow. What's all that stuff, eh? That's long gone. That's yeah. As Stan frantically rushed to fix the van before me or Gus arrived, I was still on road, battling the lack of tarmac. It was getting late, but the thought of a snaky dinner powered me forward. Uh, I think Gus is, I've just seen him hang up that snake out there. Go on then, talk us through the strat here then, Gus. I'm gonna try to skin it. I look like some YouTube movie about how to prepare snakes, so I'm kind of an expert now. Ah, nice. I bought also some yogurt to marinate the meat, to get the sourish tender up the meat a bit. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna batter the snake and then um, deep God, fry it. Wild, eh? <laughs> yeah, that looks mad. Smelling a bit like a pepper army. Wow. Not just done <laughs> Oh. Oh. Smells delicious. <laughs> <laughs> that air bubble does not look like a good sign. It's a bit methane -y. Yeah, it's a bit rotten, eh? Nah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, boys? I've got fuel actually in the, in the... I think I might be all right. You have fun, though, yeah? You have fun, lads. This is your f***ing idea. <laughs> <laughs> we all went to bed, giving up on the idea of eating snake. Goss, on the other hand, There's nothing like too much oil. <laughs> Holy <shit. laughs> uh, do you like medium rare? <laughs> I'm gonna do a test if this one is medium rare or if it's like fully done. What does it taste like, the actual meat? Like snake meat is a bit known to taste shit. So that's why I like let it marinate all night in the buttermilk. Now it tastes a bit like buttermilk. <laughs> buttermilk. Like chicken. Ah, definitely, like, amazing. Mm, good. Amazing. Here goes nothing. Tastes like chicken. It's really nice. We'll try some too nice homemade dipping sauce. Oh, wow. So most meat is like around the spine. Mm. Would you say it tastes like chicken? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both said that. I mean, I was not expecting it to be this good after um, well, yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the batter's banging, eh? So good. Morning. Do you want some snake? Yeah. Hey, you've actually done a good job for that, I can't lie. A bit jealous. I think that's going to be the best piece I think of so, the actually, yeah. Can't taste like chicken. Yes! <laughs> yes! Four out of four. <laughs> We'll give it a four. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but what snake breakfast is complete without pancakes? Welcome back to cooking with Gus. <laughs> Thank you, Gus. You're, you're a great cook. <laughs> Fueled up and ready to go, I slivered back onto the tarmac to do it all over again, hoping beyond hope that I wouldn't be violently sick from eating potentially rotten snake flesh. Having now found out that it was a puff adder, the deadliest snake in Africa, whose venom kills you in 24 hours, I really should have been more worried. Oh 
our loss, which would be without you. There could have easily been like a few stints where I had to take like a week or so off because I just think my body would be so like malnourished. My diet without you is like shit. I actually reckon I'd be a fucked without it. Can't lie. Good stuff. All right, see you in a bit. As I left, this gent arrived with an interesting story to tell. What was your name again? Seiko Omar, buddy. This is my father here. Wow, really? He's our president here. Okay, <laughs> president of this district. District. Mm -hmm. District. How many so. people live in this district? About 4,000 in my district. Ah. 4,000 people. What are your main responsibilities? Can you have a problem? On fait la justice. Many things. Administration, voilà. conflict resolving, and development like yeah. building schools. Yeah. Before no no light, we bring light. Wow. Somewhere no water, we for us many things many things. Okay, I wish you good luck. Eh? Thank you so much. Thank you too much. Who you are in my home? C'est moi qui devais vous faire un cadeau, pas vous qui devez vous faire un cadeau. It's been a bit of shame because according to their culture, when we are the guests, we should be the ones receiving presents <sighs> and not him. Your time, your explanation, it's a great gift. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Night began to fall over the valley as I continued on my route through the mountains. But thank God I had some more fantastic food to look forward to. We got three times dinner. Oh, <sighs> Last time I tried to feed Stan porridge, he wasn't very happy. I Is hope today will be different. I'll admit this one's better than the last. What is the texture? Vomit. Chunky, wet, yellow, but warm. But I like, actually really don't mind it. What about all food? Where's it ranking? I would have expected like a nine because even though it tastes bad, you don't need to spend an hour chewing on it. You can just swallow it. Yeah, but you're all about this efficiency stuff. I like to enjoy life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Enjoying? I, I, I never heard to work. You know that really tingly feeling in your body when you butcher a chicken? That's enjoyment. Oh. I get that tingly feely from... <laughs> tingly <laughs> feely? <laughs> it's a tingly feely now. Yeah. I get that from like a really good um, burger. Or like a um, chicken tikka masala. Yeah, or lasagna. So you want to say, for you, lasagna is just as fun as butchering a chicken. Your tingly feely is different, but it's the same emotion. These, we have these things called emotions as humans. You normally say f them. In this case, don't f the tingly feely. Appreciate the tingly feely. Feel the tingly feely. <laughs> What's going on? Here he comes. Gus has brought you some really nice dinner again. My favourite sentence, I think, from Project Nathatoa is Gus has bought you nice dinner. It's porridge. Porridge? Okay. Oh! Oh, kiddo. Oh, wow, that is open. That was mine. Oh, sorry, Jamie. Porridge? Hmm. Porridge in the bag. Um, yeah, um, I think I'm busy, actually. What are you doing? I just. Just got this thing I need to go to. Hang on, let me check your schedule. So, I just checked your schedule, you're free. Just, this guy invited me to this thing. I don't want to be rude. Uh, just Steve. Cool. Um, yeah. What's that, Steve? Morning. Morning, bruv. Are you going to go running? I think so. Cool, that's my job done then. I'm nice. Sick you. So you've eaten on this mission? I have eaten a couple times, yeah. <laughs> Good, glad to clarify that. Times, yeah, I have eaten. You've had porcupine, gazelle, oh, yeah. you've had snake now. <laughs> what would you have to eat to become an official lion? Maybe to become a lion, I have to eat a lion. You know, like, like you back in day, you know, like Genghis and them boys. I kill you and I'll take everything you have. Your whole life is now my life. So maybe it works the same way with lions. Like you kill the lion, now I am the lion. Wow. Science. That is science, Hashtag actually. Science. Hashtag old school science. All right. Time to do it all again, I think. Ready to graduate from geezer to lion, I bounced out onto the tarmac to search for one. I was hungry for lion steak today, but a violent ferocity of my ones and twos my dangerous reputation must have scared them off. 
the cowards. I'd have to settle for yet another Gus special. Hey Russ. Yo. Famous line. Oh. Gus has brought you some dinner. Go on then. Oh, look at that. It's got another bag inside of the black bag. <laughs> wow, that actually looks good. What is this, an egg chip bat? No, it's a burger. F I wasn't expecting that. I know, right? <laughs> Way better than I was expecting. I'd give this at least an 8.5 out of 10. Wow, f***ing hell. Might well, go as far as saying best food I've eaten in Guinea. Excellent. It's been an odd episode for food, but I'd say this this is a win. Yeah, definitely better than snake. I powered off onto the road with newfound energy. Gus and Stan decided to go climbing, but yet again discovered that Guinean eight-year-olds are tougher than any of us. How does it feel to be beaten by a four-year-old? You did take the easy route. I'm gonna go and do this now and completely eat my way. I survived. <laughs> hey, très bien. Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> This, this one is like all technique. He doesn't need strength. Do you see this? It's not human. Yeah, honestly, like I used to coach kids climbing when I was younger, and this is like genuine, serious talent. Like if they're climbing at this level at this age, if they were trained properly, they could be in, in world championships. Easy. And then there, you can get your foot up. Sure. Bye, Ashamed and defeated, the boys headed to camp as I continued to tear up the roads into the sunset. The elevation was beginning to calm down, giving way to stunning flat plains. Just look at this beautiful drone shot. What's just happened? Drone's uh, falling out of the sky. It's not meant to do that. Yeah, no, it's not, is it? Uh, no. We've got this map which tells us where it lost signal. Hopefully we can retrieve something. On the hunt. Getting close to it. Ah, where's the drone, Jamie? Somewhere in there. No, oh, you started another fire. fire. Oh, for <laughs> sake. It's in the fire though, isn't it? The drone is in that fire. I mean, this is actually a joke, isn't it? This is a joke. We are the punchline. All right, the guys called us in. Ah, yes. Ah. Mm. Bubble. Oh, mate, literally, we are the unluckiest people on the planet. Why are we trying to do this mission? <laughs> Almost like we're destined to fail. <laughs> so, do you want to know the good news or the bad news? Oh, you mother the good news is Gus is about to collect pizzas and bring it. Already knew that, so it's not good news. Give me the sh news. What's the bad news? The drone cut out in midair. Uh, it fell into oh a God. field. It survived. Then someone lit the field on fire. Wow. So it dies. Oh wow. You could say that, yeah. Hmm. The SD card survived. No. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's not ideal, is it? Really? Not at all. It's mad, it's just flying, flying, flying. Oh, never mind. Oh. So, the funny thing is, like, I ordered two Hawaiian pizzas. I know, like, Russ loves Hawaii. And then I picked it up, and he was like, I'm very sorry, but there was no pineapple. <laughs> it's all right, it's okay. I mean, it's not a Hawaiian pizza, but. What if the two is Hawaii? What is the difference? What are you saying, Russ? Do you want to hear what the boys did to the drone? Actually, I think it'd be better just to show. Mm. I expected a lot of things. It fell 150 meters. It didn't die. And then a man set the field on fire. It landed in the, in the 